So I'd like to show you how we use rheology and tribology data to help formulators predict the sensory properties of cosmetics, skincare products and pharmaceutical topicals. Now predicting sensory properties using these in vitro methods is unarguably a tough gig and we're certainly not going to put any sensory panelists out of a job in the near future. However, the benefits of being able to rapidly screen multiple formulations and to compare those formulations to benchmarks of known sensoriality is undeniably a very desirable capability. And we have to make use then of the tools that we've currently got available to us to get us started down that road. You can think about the sensory experience as being a bit like listening to a piece of music. You have multiple components contributing to the experience and it's a constantly changing mix with a second by second shifting landscape. If you think about the sequence of events for using a skincare product, well you've got the initial appearance of the product as the user opens up the tub or the jar. And uh, then you've got the first touch, uh, the pick up and carry over behavior, the initial application onto the skin and uh, the beginning of spreading, and then the later stages of spreading, and finally we get into the rub out and the afterfeel. There are a whole range of physical processes going on throughout that uh, chain of events, really. With compression, shear, abrasion, uh, adhesion, temperature changes, and composition changes. So let's look at a typical application, how we combine three metrics, yield stress, viscosity, and coefficient of friction, to generate this three-dimensional scatter plot that we can use to give us an initial, what we call an establishing shot of a range of products in a marketplace. Okay, so yield stress is a measure of the strength of the soft solid structure that we see in a cream, an ointment, or even in a lotion. Yield stress is highly relevant in the early stages of the experience, the appearance, the first touch, and the initial application onto the skin. Once we start rubbing the product onto the skin, then we break up that structure, and at that point, viscosity starts to become highly relevant. And specifically here, we're interested in the high shear viscosity, because rubbing onto the skin is a pretty high shear process. Okay, in the later stages of the application, then that layer of product gets thinner and thinner, and then we get into a direct skin-on-skin -skin interaction. And at that point, where we've got these two surfaces interacting with each other, then we're into a tribological situation more than a rheological situation. And so then the tribology, the friction, and the lubricity of the product uh, becomes more relevant. Okay, so when we then combine these three metrics together to generate this three-dimensional scatter plot, it gives us a nice visual indication of where these individual product types are located within that space. What we can then do is, if we're interested in, let's say, for example, day creams, we could zoom in on the day cream area, get a bunch of different day creams, and do the same thing, characterize them, add them to this plot, and then we can look into much more granularity and more detail as to where the day creams sit in this certain place. So this offers a nice simple tool that enables formulators to compare their products to other products of known sensoriality in the marketplace, and also to identify the impact of changes in formulation and process, aging, and a whole bunch of uh, uh, other factors in there. So looking at these three metrics, yield stress, viscosity, and coefficient of friction is a great start. And you have to start somewhere, but it's important not to underestimate how complex it is to predict sensory properties. And, uh, and typically what we would do from here is we start to gather some further metrics then and we'll combine them using some other statistical tools and multi-dimensional analysis techniques uh, to, um, uh, to visualize and, uh, and build up models of, uh, of this sensory landscape. Hopefully this has been useful for you. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to get in touch through the website, rheologylab.com and uh, subscribe for more videos. And uh, yeah, I look forward to talking to you next time.